Greetings and welcome back to the world of Drakenheim. My name is Monty Martin and this is the Dungeon Dudes weekly 5th edition actual play campaign. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin playing Wilhelm von Kessel, the human swashbuckler rogue. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Benitis playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter eldritch knight. And Joel Gorman playing Wrath, the Asimar warlock. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the first time, Welcome, we are the Dungeon Dudes, and Kelly and I post new videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays over on YouTube, where we cover everything TTRPGs and D&D, including advice for players and guides for game masters. So check us out over there. You can also join us on Tuesday evenings when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. And if you love the world of Drakenheim and want to bring it home to your own campaigns, check out our store at drakenheim.com where you can pick up copies of Dungeons of Drakenheim or pre-order Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim. Links are in the description. But with that, let us return to the fate of Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war, the power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all. The fate of Drakenheim. Welcome back to Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, they had transported themselves, oh, after a little bit of a detour, <laughs> to the snowy city of Healing in the far north of Westmar. There they hope to negotiate with the du Duchess Sophia von Sneestrom, Wilhelm's distant cousin, over her support of the throne of Westmar. Having made their way to the castle in Healing, they have been greeted by the young Duchess, who has proved to be a somewhat enigmatic figure. Um, as the evening's meal is served along with wine and mead and a very hearty roast of northern fare, the Duchess Sophia sits in her chair before the great hearth that warms the castle. The dark stone and the, ba the banners that hang showing the heraldry of all the various clans that owe fealty to Healing. She uh, gently pets the um, Snow Lynx cat in her lap, the strange cat with very pointed furry ears and a sort of spotted black and white mottled fur after it has returned from the odd moment of synchronicity with Bruce. Um, she continues to speak. It's very lovely that you've come, cousin, to see things here. I wish to know more about what your intentions are. What are your goals? What do you have planned? What is your grand vision of Westmar? Well, that's a big question, Fifi. Um, I believe that... In the past 15 years, Westmar has fallen into infighting, and we've been at each other's throats for too long when we should be united with common goals. And I believe that not only this nation, but the entire continent has things in common that we could be working towards, but we're too busy trying to kill each other to get any of it done. Mainly, the problem with delirium, some people see it as a great boon and benefit, others have seen the disaster it's caused. The th uh, me and my two companions here, before teaming up with the others, were tasked 
with cleaning up delirium messes around Westmar. We've been around mm. over half of Westmar cleaning up particular messes, and I can tell you with certainty that the problems that delirium are causing greatly outweigh the benefits of it. Lots of people are dying, monsters roam, ruins and streets and towns hiding in the sewers, the lakes, the rivers. Everywhere in Westmar is being contaminated by this, and I believe that when we look to our, our brethren in Illyria or Caspia, they too are being affected by this. And so my goal at the moment is to talk to the leaders of Westmar and unite under the idea that Westmar, first of all, needs to be moving towards a common goal. The folk to the south are so, so, well, if they were as hardy and brave as the folk here in the north, maybe they would be able to have a better handle on things and wouldn't need you to clean up their messes for them. It's admirable that, that you, you've helped them out, but up here, we deal with all manner of monsters, beasts, ferocious weather, and terrible conditions all the time. We are, know to be brave, and we know to work together to survive. Seems like those are values that in the warmth and comfort of the South, many have forgotten. I agree, and those are those are values that I think need to ring true for all of Westamar. So I, I feel like we could be on the same page, Fifi. Certainly, sir. I... I must say, it is a thing that is very close to my heart. I haven't been down to the capital, obviously, since that fateful day. Did you know that I was there that day? I was only five, but I was there. The day of the meteor? Yes. My father had been having a meeting with... with... with Uncle Ulrich, just the few the few days before. It was only because we were scheduled to leave the city that morning that we survived. It's incredible. I, I feel like the serendipity of the amount of people immediately affected by the day of the meteor. Uh, Veo here was living in the city when the meteor struck and somehow survived and continued to live there for all these years. Sebastian foretold the coming of the meteor mm. uh, in a vision a, a day before it happened. There's, but even then the, the effect of that meteor has rippled out. It caused the civil war that destroyed the Von Kessel family. It brought Caspia here to do what? What? <laughs> Draw Caspian here. Why are you here, Pluto? <laughs> Pluto is just like in between heapings of food. Oh, we wanted money. <laughs> we wanted money and land. Wait, you came to exploit Westamar? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I fell in love with it. <laughs> Sophia, she, she smiles and she um, pets her cat rubbing the sides of its face as she looks in it it looks at the cat in the eyes and says yes all that delirium really has affected people in so many strange ways hasn't it dinah and she looks back up at the rest of you afterwards it's quite inexplicable i've heard so many stories oh i'm sure we have some stories that will give you nightmares and the stories don't normally do it justice do they no. we've experienced it ourselves when we are uh, been on this journey but I've been lucky to have these fine folks with me. Rule number 47, teamwork is a key to achieving the unachievable. And I think that that's something that I want to stay true to, that together we can defeat any evil that faces us. So what do you need? Well, I'm under the impression that you have one of the strongest military forces here. All I want 
is your support to face the coming threats. In the process of trying to unite Westmar, we will make a few enemies along the way, I'm sure of it. For one, we're going to have to convince, convince Toddsfeld to join us, and that is going to be a task in and of itself. Cousin, the word support is doing a lot of work in that sentence. And it would behoove you to be a little more specific in your dealings with, with me and other Northerners. I'm to guess by support you mean you would like me to dispatch into your command significant numbers of my bannermen and soldiers. In addition to possibly giving you financial support, food, equipment, and material. Is that what you mean by support? If you have any to spare, and in return, I would like to offer you my support and help in any endeavors that you may need. Right. And so your support, then, would not take the form of soldiers or material or money or supplies, but in some kind of nebulous favor, I'm to assume. If I do become King of Westmar, I can offer you much more than nebulous favors. I will have the power to put you in any position that you deem fit. I will have the power to make Helix stand as one of the most powerful cities in the continent. Helix already is one of the most powerful cities in the continent, if you ask me. I agree, but... Currently, with a torn Westamar, that thriving that that thriving for the power that you have immediately contrasts that of Dransmond, who also believes themselves to be powerful and could lead to more civil war. My hope is to stop civil war and to allow the cities of Westamar to stand as powerful entities, and we share what we can all gain from a uh, we share what we can all gain from being together and unified. Cousin, you say some very beautiful words, Thank but you. I just think that you should have a few more specifics prepared for, it, especially if you're going to be speaking with the Duke of Toddsfeld. Nevertheless, I agree with you, and I will offer you this support. Um, I will call my banners, and obviously we will need to discuss with your commanders the details, but if you need military and if you need soldiers to fight, then my soldiers will rally behind you. Thank you, Fifi. As a show of good faith, is there anything that you would have me do for you? She thinks and ponders for a moment while petting her cat. And she um, scratches the cat under the chin. Says, Dinah, is there anything that Willie could do for us? I wonder. I'll have to think about it. I will let you know that as a ruler, I'm not one for sitting on a throne and simply commanding people to do the dirty work that I need done. Uh, Rudy here and Wrath can attest to the fact that I prefer to be a man of action. I prefer to be out there performing tasks, big and small. There is an obstacle then, perhaps, that you can help me with. And it will help you in the process. My soldiers have been engaged quite consistently of late in making sure that my territory is secure from the giants of stone rest. We've ran into them before, as we said. If they, it might very well be that they do not understand the ways of our kingdom and they don't respect our territory and it might behoove them to have a message from our king to remind them of the territory that is theirs and the territory that is ours. 
That is the biggest thing that I deal, deal with on a regular basis. I can keep my own vassals in line, but the biggest thing that they're always asking me for is more help in making sure that their ter territories are protected. And if you want to talk about support, then making sure that our claims are protected from outsiders and beasts would be a notable thing. Of course, there's also the dragon, but that's a whole other matter. And as we get further up north, there are the dwarves as well of Ironhelm Ridge that we've had friendly relations with. But the giants are the most pressing issue, and of late they have been a problem for me. One thing I believe would be of um, uh, of a positive nature to support Wilhelm would be the idea that those problems become inherently those of the greater Westamar. Hmm. And by showing your allegiance, those, those nebulous promises become more clear and unifying, especially with the help of Toddsfeld. Those issues that you present would become uh, uh, our problems as well. Raph, beautifully said. Yes, that is the point of a unified Westamar, is if you bring me these problems, I, as the king of Westamar, will take it upon myself to make sure that it is handled. And seeing as I am here now, I will personally see to it that this issue is resolved. Well, then maybe there is one other small favor that you could do for me while you're here. Anything, Fifi. Anything. We're, we're well, family. She looks at her cat and smiles. Anything. Don't say anything. It's my cousin. Words are powerful. Within reason. <laughs> There's a caveat. Within reason. And what is reason, anyways? I'm not going to go on a murder spree and kill other dukes on your behalf quite yet. I don't have any such such things. Earlier, you mentioned that you'd run afoul of some of the giants. They were twisted, perhaps delirium infected, although we found no delirium on them, but they showed the same signs as many of the creatures that we have come across in the past that had been affected by delirium. And so they weren't the regular giants of stone rest, which causes me some concern as the giants of stone rest have for the most part honored the borders of our lands was there anything else peculiar about them uh they collected dwarf heads that's what i feared not long ago i procured the services of several of the dwarves from I the I ironhelm ridge to help me excavate an old family crypt. It's north of here, a day or two journey, but through some of the harsher wilderness. Long have the people of Healing kept the ways of the old faiths, and amongst my family, we remember those long forgotten elder gods to whom the mortals owe their oldest and greatest debts. And amongst my family, we remember outer and elder gods far greater than even the most petty of the old gods. For some time, there are personal treasures of my family that are hidden there that are of great spiritual value to me. They meant a lot to my father, and I would like to put them in a higher place of honor than where they have been left. Namely, here in Healy where they can be close to those who still hold those faiths. 
this quarry was peculiar to unearth because the soil and stone and metal was beyond what my own people were capable of excavating. Thus, I brought the dwarves in to help. They brought with them a machine to aid in the process. And I believe that that has arisen the ire of the giants, Stone Rest. The contents of that crypt are though are belong to my family, and I want them. But I worry that the situation has gone out of control, and your help would be greatly appreciated. Well, Fifi, I will personally see to it then that the heirlooms of your family are returned to you. And once they are obtained, we can tell the Giants of Stone Rest that we will end the digging on that site. Were you in need of the resources there, or simply was this all a means to benefit from excavating the heirlooms and gain resources in the process? The the ancient site was long buried beneath the glaciers, and thus the dwarves were needed to both cut through ice and rock and metal to unearth it. Last I'd heard they'd made some kind of breakthrough, but that was the last I'd heard from them only a few days ago. Then it, it seems a simple enough problem to solve. We get the heirlooms for you. We tell the Giants of Stone Rest that we will be leaving that quarry and it will remain untouched and that our business there is done. Hold on a moment. What we've come across is any indication Delirium might have something to do with this. We can't promise that it's going to remain untouched if it has to do with Delirium. Mm. Correct. We may need to bury it once we're done removing the heirlooms. If there is a Delirium problem buried in the ice there, we will have to do our part to make sure that that is put a, put to an end. We want to make sure your your citizens, your home is not touched by this evil rock because it turns even the most normal things into monsters. And that's a problem in itself that it seems like is already starting to touch down your way. This is also in turn a favor to the giants of stone rest. We have giants that have been transformed by some means it's just as much of a threat to them as it is to us here in helix so by solving the problem of this quarry we help both the giants and helig we leave with the heirlooms and then we're done with it if we run into the giants perhaps we can explain the situation to them i know that they're not as forthcoming with loyalty information or trusting humans as some of the other giants in Netherwind are, but we can try. Rena speaks up. Now, I have to say, for my part, there's a whole bunch of other giants that I have seen coming this way. There's a whole war party on on the path. They're mad. Mad about what? The quarry? She looks at... R Rita looks at Sophia. Uh, um... Seems to be. Now hold on a minute. <laughs> you can't tell me that them digging in a quarry is causing a war to come upon your city. What else is going on here? Is the quarry in Helig territory, or is it in the Giants' territory? Rena turns to Sophia. And Sophia says, It's debatable. It is no doubt a quarry. The, the site was made by my ancestors. This, uh, this group of giants, do they pose a threat to your current forces? Rena 
answers bluntly. Now, Sophie's soldiers are pretty good, but it's not like they're going to be able to do, do the th type of fighting that you can. It sounds like, like you said, if that part is debatable, they're coming to debate it in the way they know best. Really, is it just that you want these artifacts and they can have that space? Or is it you want to have that space? What are we walking into here? I think if it's just the heirlooms you're after, we agree to the giants to give up that space once we're done, but let them know the threat that it poses and that we will help them put an end to that threat and then leave the site for good, if you can agree to that, Fifi, that once those heirlooms are returned, you have no reason to venture into those mountains anymore. Or do we simply take the heirlooms and leave? giving them the space. But if it's contaminated, that could be the end of the Giants of Stone Rest. And not an end as in solving our problems <laughs> and wrath, an end as in now ah, we have seems an, like it wrapped itself up nicely. Now we have an army of mutated giants that are still a threat to Helig. The Giants of Stone Rest are dead and they're all horrible monsters. It's, it's a worse situation. The Giants are part of Westmar, even though they may not see it that way. I would rather use diplomacy with them than slaughter them. Will the Giants negotiate? Or will they simply ask to have what's taken back? Will they allow you to continue this, uh, what you might call, um, invasion of their space? I don't know. Even under terms. I don't know, and I hope that that's something that you can help with. I like to think that we are very capable of uh, stealing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> We've done it from others. Um, we work quickly, and we are small. We could easily go in, take the arrows, find out the source of this contamination, and if need be, remove it or destroy it, and then simply leave without the need to even begin negotiations. Maybe even allowing the giants to believe this as a, uh, as a, uh, uh, a unified win. The site itself, though, is special. And I do not like the idea of falling into the hands of the giants of stone rest. Oh, so what what you're actually saying is you want us to take the land for Helig. It doesn't need to be taken for Helig. I just don't want the giants to I don't trust what they would do with it. This space is older than the meteor. It is older even than the giant's gods. But we know delirium grows. Who knows what it's been doing under the ground? Why would delirium be buried under the ground? Rena says, it's not buried under the ground. The dwarves brought it. The dwarves brought delirium. Brought yes. Oh, in the machine. Oh. It's got so, it. So the dwarves is, have contaminated this site with delirium. Hmm. Well, then removal of the machine is also part of our task as Dusk Wardens, which even if we are at odds with some of the Academy, it still stands that the Dusk Wardens' task is true, and that is to protect this world from the problems of delirium and extraplanar activity. This sounds like a job for us. I think First and foremost, at least we need to investigate before we make any promises of what we can deliver. Because there's there's mm. something I feel like that isn't, we don't know exactly what we're going into. Will you give us at least that to go and see what's going on? Certainly. Very well. We will set out first thing tomorrow with a task force 
to investigate. We may leave some of our people behind. We're the task force, <laughs> right? Well, let's let's talk to Veo, Pluto, and Sebastian and, and put something together. Uh, yeah, look, yeah. Yes. And Raina speaks up. And I'll go out and I'll find out just how far away those giants are. If they're if they're ranging anywhere where close, I'll warn you as soon as po possible. But hopefully, I can see the lay of the land and figure out exactly how far away they are. Very well. Be careful, please. Keep. keep I'll be up. fine, Mom. Of course you will. You'll do, you'll do your best. So proud. If we may, uh, the six of us would like to have a quick chat, just to make our arrangements since we're the ones facing danger tomorrow. Very well. Have a lovely evening. Come, Dinah. And the cat and Sophia leave the chamber. And you are left to your own suites that, are, that your, your own apartments and, and guest rooms. There's kind of a guest tower as part of the castle that you can use as your accommodations. Do you guys find it weird how into her cat she is? It reminds me a little of Wrath. Uh, but I don't find it weird at all. I, I've i seen pet owners intensely loyal to their pets before. Not to the point of Wrath's obsession, but... Mm. is it, Do we think... Wrath, what was your read on it? I want to talk to their cat. She has much to share about... Um, Delirium. The cat? Yes. And... I'm sorry, is this another Bruce situation? I don't know. But I intend to... find out more. There... There's something... intriguing... about their relationship. Did she have that cat when she was... younger? Well, out of the six of us, I imagine Veo, Pluto, and Sebastian are quietly sitting in this room. Yes. Yeah. Um, out of the six of us, I, I think it might be in our best interest to leave somebody behind, perhaps more than one person, to keep tabs. Um, Raph, which, which do you want? Do you want to come with us, or do you prefer to... Keep tabs on the cat. I'm going. Very well. Um, Rudy? I mean, I'm not letting you two go off on your own, especially if my daughter's involved. She's likely going to tag along with us, I assume, but even if she's not. I've seen the trouble you two can get in without me, so I'm, I'm coming. The reality is, is that Bruce has told me there's something there. You heard Fifi, she has mentioned that there's some ancient place, these heirlooms she speak of, they are much older than I believe she lets on. I think I need to go there. I know I need to go there. Well, sorry to the other three, but I feel like that settles it then. Uh, you're directly involved. But you know what? You have family. Wrath, that's exactly what I... The feeling I got was that they're not telling us the whole truth. And I'm sorry, I, we can't promise to do nothing until we figure out what's going on there, especially if you're feeling like Bruce is telling you there's some stuff going on. There's family... This family dynamic that you have. Sometimes people will use you, Wilhelm, and we must be cautious... Although she is an old, she is related to you. Um, she could, she does not owe you anything. That's she true. is, uh, she is a very capable and powerful ruler. And from the sounds of it, she did not even need you. This can be concerning when it comes to negotiations. Then we make ourselves valuable by solving this problem. But listen, Wilhelm, I've been used by 
specifically your family before <laughs> in situations like this. Caution me if I'm a little bit weary of just taking them at what they say is face value. I don't want us and you specifically to be used to create a situation where you're going to be blamed for what happens. Where you're going to be held accountable because it's more than that. You need to be cautious on what you take on when other people say they need you. Which is why I think we need to go and look and see what's going on and we can figure it out. This is why we need... Somebody needs to keep eyes and ears here. And um, Vale is Lord Commander. And the one with the pointiest ears. And the one with the pointiest ears. I have both eyes and ears, so... Could you do me a favor? Of course, Your Majesty. What can I do to help? I need you. Remain polite. Remain cordial. Stay here. You need a few days rest after what you've been through. Nudge, nudge. I need you to keep tabs on the ongoings of this castle, of Fifi, her staff, and also the cat. Keep your eyes on the cat. Yeah, I think... You know what, between me, Sebastian, and Pluto, we can get a gauge, you know, if the king is staying here, we have to make sure it's safe, regardless if it's your family. If any magical occurrences come up, I'm sure Sebastian can take care of it. And Pluto... <laughs> yeah? I don't know, what can you do? <laughs> what can't I do? I can run, I can climb, I can kill stuff, Pluto, I can stab stuff. You can, you're great with strong people, soldiers. Maybe try to get on the good side of the Oh yeah, you could, you could like here. buddy it up with some of the, some of the, you're good at making friends. I'm gonna wrestle my way to the top of the, <laughs> that's the not making military friends. ladder. Yes. Although actually when you wrestled me, that's how we became friends, so. Wrestle you. Listen, they talk about being strong against all these monsters and these beasts. I bet they don't even have stories that compare to yours, Pluto. Yeah, you killed a troll. I killed more than a troll. You killed... At least two. <laughs> I've killed at least a bridge of trolls. No, that was a bridge of minotaurs. Minotaurs, sorry. I sometimes forget how many things I've crushed under my might. You killed, uh, there was, you killed a, a arms. It had lots of arms in I the basement. A, I killed a demon in a forsaken castle. You did. Yeah, you can handle, wait, what are we talking about again? Soldiers. Soldiers. Yeah. Soldiers. No, I'm we're just... not, we're not killing the soldiers. No, no I'm just we're... bragging. You're just I bragging. Think... Just yeah. bragging. <laughs> I think... Mini Gasconade. No. <laughs> Everything is a mini desk. <laughs> That's the Caspian way. Um, maybe, um, I mean, I can definitely give you an idea of what kind of uh, banner support they have, what kind of numbers they have. Also, um, if giants are coming, I would love to kill me some more giants. Get them prepared. All right, so um, I'll watch the cat because it's probably magical mm. uh, so wrath says and if that's the case uh if anything goes on i'll blow the cat up wait can we give <laughs> i mean <laughs> cats die all the time if i that think cat's... that might lose us the support of uh wilhelm's cousin so i'll yeah, turn yeah. the cat into a dog they won't see it coming they'll hate it yeah the pe cat people are not dog people i can tell you that yeah it's it's not easy to it's not a light switch done deal just watch them with your goggles and see if there's anything going on that's there. a great idea that's actually like a really smart idea i have goggles i'll watch the cat with my goggles you watch the duchess you get in with the troops Wrestle. and together we'll, we'll figure out what's going on here what <laughs> No. <laughs> wait, no, wait. take over here. I mean, what just if we understand need... Helig. We will understand the core, essential, inner workings of Helig and bend it to it. Who am I, Wrath? No. <laughs> no, look, look. The point is, it's just cold here. Everyone's just... Everyone's just cold. I think if we bring a little warmth, <laughs> like through the fire of Ignatius, um, we will uh, gain support. Number, I'm just gonna be like a heater. I'm just gonna walk around and be like, hey, hands cold? Hey, hands cold? Hey, your hands cold? Bring the that flame could go to their hearts. 
Not the not the not, not literally. <laughs> ignite their hearts, and if things go south, ignite their bodies. Helig is the only capital in Westamar that does not have a cathedral as the sacred flame. Yeah. There, so, there are some small chapels, but the warmth of the sacred flame has not found much purchase in the frigid north. So Don't maybe when you, when, the ambassador? <laughs> when you pull out Ignatius, maybe be like, it's the sword of... Demon killing. Demon killing, yeah. uh, old god loving... We sort of went to hell with this sword. And so it loved it. And it will yell at you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we'll just leave the uh, sacred flame at home and we'll bring the real flame. I am no mere demon slaying sword. I am the burning blade of truth that spreads the light of the sacred flame. I know, I know, I know you are. And we all know you are, but you just have to like keep- Do not downplay my achievements. (laughs) I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I won't use you as a simple heater. Use him as a truth telling sword. He's the truth telling sword. Figure out what these soldiers know about the truth. I'm going to be that really annoying guy in the courtyard, <laughs> just <laughs> yelling, <laughs> screaming things as I have my sword above my head. My sword is actually yelling at people walking by. Have you taken in the light? <laughs> it's important to know that Ignatius is a burning blade of truth and not a big fan of half-truths. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he does not <laughs> need lying. Um, really big, really big thing. Really big thing. How do we communicate with uh, um, these guys? Good how question. do we how do we like get in touch with them? So like, wait for them to come back. So Wilhelm's off, you know, talking to a giant. You're talking to me right now. <laughs> I am Wilhelm. Oh, hey. <laughs> it's just, I, I, I must have got up and sat down somewhere else. <laughs> I believe no. Wrath does have a pretty decent. Yes, if we need to, we can appear yeah. when you're sleeping in your dreams. That's true. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Stay out of my dreams, man. Hold on. Those are mine. Wait, 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 wait. You can put me in Pluto's dreams? <laughs> hey, hold on, hold on. Hey, hey, hey. You don't need magic to put me put yourself in my dreams. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm staying behind. And I'm there too, right? Oh yeah. Veo, what did you do? Veo's there. Veo's always there. Probably. It's uh, pretty warm in here, isn't it? You guys no, warm? It's actually freezing. <laughs> the tundra. Look, I yeah. As long as we can stay in touch, because uh, if you know, frost giants get close, we may need to uh, let them know. Ooh. Do se- sending stones have to be two other stones? Yeah, they're paired. Oh. Yeah. It's okay. We got they got dreams. Um. Yes. <laughs> what if they're not sleeping and we need to contact them immediately? Then they should just sleep as much as possible. Okay. As you drift off into sleep, <clears throat> you will awaken, not in this world, but in another. One I have crafted, one I have decided will be our meeting place. And and then I will share with you a message, a message you will not forget because you will remember it. That, uh, yes. You're talking about the realm of dreams. Why? We've been there. This is much different. Don't we have a, a cloak that goes there too? I think we have a blanket that lets us go to the realm of dreams. I don't know where we're keeping that. I'll be honest, most blankets take me to the realm of dreams as well. (laughs) And that's just how it goes. Is there any is there any other way that we can Wait, I guess yeah, I guess you wait for us wait for us at night. We will contact our... you every night. Every evening. Every if worst um... comes to worst, if we really need something, I will shoot a fireball into the sky and you'll know something is wrong. Okay. 
Oh, yeah, how good. far is it? How far is this? Do did we get any read yet on the um on like now do we have like the the uh Duchess, right? Duchess? Yeah. Do we have the Duchess's um I don't, I don't want to say the coordinates, but like, has she given us kind of a better idea of where this actual quarry is? Rena will be able to give you the directions. Okay. Yeah. Very well. The three of us will set out in the morning. The three of you will stay behind and learn as much as possible about healing. And expect our return. On the seventh day at dawn, turn to the east. Why? What if it well, that's where the mountains are, so... What if it takes us more than three and a half days? In a few days, look to the east, and we might be there, we might not. We'll, we'll be back when we decide we'll, to be. We'll be back or we won't. <laughs> you know, you'll know it. If it's been like a week, maybe send out a search party or something. No, we're going to talk to them every evening. Uh, right. I think it might be better to keep that. Why am I being the responsible one? <laughs> Hopefully we can always send Raina back as a messenger. Yes. Or... Just in case. Or the fireball. Or the... We'll send a fireball back to be our messenger. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Sounds like a plan. Do we sleep? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, you can take a full rest. Is there anything else you'd like to do before you set out? Do you need any supplies or any provisions before you set out? Well, I was thinking, um, could Sebastian cast some stuff on us. For mm -hmm. example, could he polymorph one of us? He could fill up some of your rings. Yeah. Or if you I, if you have those. That's the other. Um but Sorry? uh but oh, you have rings. the have rings. the journey to the quarry, which uh mm. Rena informs you is a site called Kolf. Kolf. Kolf with a Q. Please spell that? Um, Kolf, um, Q-W-O-L-T-H. So the quarry. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, before, uh, we head out, uh, I'll can, can Veo use her Lord Commander Seal to just give you some... <laughs> oh, yeah. ...good advice before you go. Yeah. Because I think it doesn't go away unless we... And that's 20 HP? It, it goes away if you take a look. Don't. <laughs> yeah. Don't sleep. Don't you'll sleep. you'll have it for the first leg of the journey, but uh, okay. but but yeah. The um. R R Rena says the it'll be at least one. She she explains. I'll be able to bring it there as fast as I possibly can, but it's still gonna be a night or two of roughing it before we get to Colf. Well, let me make sure at least if you come across anything bad on the journey that. And I bellow out <laughs> that you stay safe, <laughs> that you do a good job. Oh, thank you. I hope you come back. <laughs> <laughs> Your blessing means so much. I will keep them motivated, Veo, for the rest of the journey as best I can. That is to say, I have inspiring leader. It's not as quite as good, but I will still be able to give us temporary hit points. I guess in the meantime, just in case, also Veo, Pluto, and Sebastian get it. Just in case. Yeah, true. So. Sure. What about Sebastian? What what could Sebastian give um, Wrath in his ring that could help? Um. How many spells can you fit in that ring? Um. What level are you? Like three, <laughs> four? How many rings? Do not downplay my power. I mean, I, but if we had to subject it to a very numerical value, it is five. Right. Um, okay. So, what do you want? You want some Tasha's Mind Whip? Uh, is there anything that you could use to, we could use to communicate? Sorry, Sebastian's Mind Whip, it's called. <laughs> uh, I, I made it. Oh, you made it? You came up with it? Uh, I invented the spell. You invented it. Uh, you could have Thunderstep. It's not far enough. If you want to be a bus, I mean Dimension Door. <laughs> um, I have that. You want some Polymorph, maybe some, uh, you could have one Animate Objects, so you could have some Shield. If What's you need. cool? What's cool? What's cool? Shields. I, have you ever seen me not cast a cool, I mean, have you ever seen me cast a spell that isn't cool? The answer is no. 
Um, magic missile, that's actually from my staff. Can I put staff spells? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, Shield, darkness, yeah. levitate, rave, and feeblement. Just, uh, I guess... I'm, uh, like, flipping through my book. <laughs> Shadow Blade. We got Vortex War. But you can animate dead if you want. You could maybe counterspell a few people. Haste. Haste always comes in handy. Real good one. Uh, you could summon a very sad version of yourself, <laughs> which will cry and attack things. I, I feel I, like that's a, more of a burden. Well, you know, you can also make it channel your rage. I feel like you're more rageful than sad, aren't you? I will kill everyone. Yeah, there you go. So you could summon summon wrath. Oh my god. It just writes itself. It's perfect. No, I I would absolutely uh, take a haste and two shields. Alright. Um, That'll be $500. <laughs> uh, Gold. Put it on my tab. Uh, done. Is there any um, magic we'll supplies pay my in this uh, town? They could furnish you with a handful of potions if you need any. Just healing potions? Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I have six greater healing potions. I also have six greater healing okay. potions. I, which I should give more to Bayo, but... They're fine. I'll take these for now. <laughs> they're at home. They're they're at base camp. But, um, money. I feel like that's a, that's a... I mean, I feel fairly prepared. I still have four extra fireballs with me, so I'm good. Oh yeah, great. That's what I mean. It's essentially a big flare. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I can skywrite. No one ever cares. Oh, that's, oh, actually... that's great! <laughs> yeah, why didn't you say that when we were trying to think of a way to communicate and she's throwing fireballs in the air? I can write all of us in the clouds. <laughs> Nobody ever cares about this spell that's perfect for this discussion. It might take a while though, still. Yeah, who's the one who didn't care? <laughs> Didn't care to join in on the conversation, Wrath. Oh, well, we'll just wait until they're f asleep and then we'll ask them for help. That's a genius idea. Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, Malish. Loyalty, eh? I'm Are dying. you guys all ready to set out? Yes, after that. <laughs> yes. And I just yell to the three of them as we're walking off. Stay out of trouble, you three! <laughs> they don't. They, okay. Probably not. All right. <clears throat> It'll be a couple days up to cold. It's gonna be cold. Gets colder. You've been warned, right? We bought fancy warm gear that looks much cooler than our regular gear. And by cooler, I mean warmer. Okay. Worst comes to worst, we have fire and I press the digitato. Bubble of heat. I don't have any of that. I make a fire. All right. Out of sticks. Yeah. I'll lead the way. You follow along, and as soon as we get close to the uh, to the quarry, we'll uh, we'll take it from there. Okay. All right. Sounds good. With that, you depart the black walls of Helig, heading out through the cold city uh, of old gods into the tundra. This late in the year, there are still some, uh, the, the last, the, there's not much that passes for a summer season this far in Helig. It's a very short period where they get maybe a couple weeks of, of good growing to to have to facilitate some hardy crops near near healing but as you get further further north very quickly it becomes rough ground ice and fields that were once gla uh, covered over with glaciers as you head further through the the um, pine forests and the the tundra fields towards the site of coal um, Rina often um, steps quite forward, taking the shape of a snowy owl to fly forward and lead you. Um, she'll, she'll often um, fly out on her own, um, sometimes 
disappearing for an hour or longer uh, to scout ahead uh, and keep a watchful, watchful eye. Nevertheless, you make good pace. Uh, and as you do travel, you do see the small signs of the roadway that the caravan of dwarven excavators would have taken uh, along the way, passing by one of their abandoned wagons and places where they've brought other supplies and provisions uh, al along with them. Rin explains, it was, uh, it was a few weeks ago that they ca that that Sophia hired them on to help with this. I've been going through the wilderness for a while, looking for Kolf, following old rumors that uh, of of places sacred to the old gods that are are scattered all all about here. There was a it was just a chance to find it. There was just one little bit of an old arch sticking up through the ice and since then the the dwarves have, have mined it all out but uh, at the time it wasn't just it was stone unlike anything that's all, around these parts thick with ore and metal almost like like some some great forge had poured out all of its molten metal all around it and so the the duchess thought that maybe she could hire some of the dwarves from Ironhelm to come out and quarry it out allowing them to take all of the metal hmm. and, and you said a few weeks ago that she did this what spurred her on to start this excavation just a whim or not really a whim. It's been, it's been an interest of her for a long time, and there have been other places that we've found that have been, that have been important to her. She's collected quite a, she's got quite a collection back in Healy, of things that are valuable to her. And it was through, I guess, studying these things that she found out about Quolf to begin with, mm. going back through old family records and whatnot. Um, the people up here are, you know, they, they keep their, their old faith. They keep the old thought, thoughts. And so for her, I guess she explained it to me as a way of honoring them. Mm. And I guess she knows that her, or she says her family is the one that built it way back when. That's what she thinks. I mean, they go back a long way and they haven't been von Schneestrom for very long in the scheme of things right the the old clans of the north went by a lot of different names and things have changed and von sneestrom's more of a southern his name coming to him earlier i wouldn't dare um but um but yeah she thinks that it's connected to something her companion how long have you known sophia oh couple of years now I used to come up around here a few times and I, and so she brought me on to to scout mm. around things because I know these parts pretty well I've been been exploring up and around this this ways for a little while now um, but uh, you know we've been good friends she's she's nice she's a little strange I'm not, I must admit but I like her her companion or cat? I am fascinated by their relationship. How long has she had this companion? Oh, she told me the story about it, I think. From what I understand, it, she, that, that cat's like 15 years old or something like that. It, it's, it's pretty old. She's had it since she was a little girl. Does Wilhelm have a memory like They've obviously ran into each other once or twice, but not that would have been when she was a baby. Give me an intelligence check. Nope. <laughs> Again, like... I don't remember This, this is one of those things of, of like, maybe she had a cat, but, like, who knows what kind of pets their cousin had. Like, you yeah. know, I don't... I yeah, she had a cat. I don't know Ruffles. if she had a... Ruffles, the cat. <laughs> I think it was hit by the media. <laughs> 
about the only thing that you 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 do know and like re that you can re recollect is yeah her and her father it was a thing that they survived um like a big deal because of their like proximity to the meter yeah meter. like there you you recall there being a period and you remember it more through your mother you remember the relief that your mother expressed when she found out that her brother was still alive right because there there was that whole period after the meteor struck where it really was who made it out and who who died yeah and and the the only thing that that's that's notable is that um sophia and gregor were like were were the people that moved from the oh they're probably dead to the oh like by the gods they survived right, right. um because they had been in in the city that day and um and from from the best that will will helm can can recollect like they were very close to to the city when it happened they had just left yeah and and like the fact is that like some people in emberwood village survived do we oh, know yeah like, emberwood village was not destroyed that day yeah so yeah. so like they could would they have made it like that far out or is it peculiar how close they were and survived um wilhelm doesn't know enough of the story right. yeah how did Veo survive? Anyway, we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> there were people who were in the city when it was hit that survived. Not many, but there were. Cool. Yeah. But this fascination mm -hmm. with this uh, quarry, it is a recent endeavor. You said only by weeks. Yeah. Interesting. It is interesting that this is coming about all in such a short time. And the relationship with the frost giants, the... Oh, I mean, that's been going on for a long time. That's been going on for decades. Yes. That was a problem even for Gregor, for, for Duke Gregor and, and, and going back. The, these disputes, ugh, it's been so, something else. I mean, between between you and me, the frost giants are a pretty reasonable folk most, most of the time. As long as you keep away from what they think is their territory. But there have been more than a, a couple of the the other nobles, the, the the counts and the barons that have wanted to go out and claim, make a claim up here. Because we'll 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 say to that the one thing about this part up here in this region, there have been a lot of gold mines up here, mm. and there have been, been some pretty rich minerals up for those that are willing to brave it and so that often means that a lot do come to try to state their claim to make make you know make it and if it ain't the giants if it ain't the cold if it ain't the harshness of surviving up here it's one thing or the other also a lot of people go missing thanks to the dragon who roams the mountains mm. so i guess what's been concerning me about this whole situation is you know your cousin said that it's been disputed ground. So what's gotten her so in a in a tiff about going in and, and getting what's from this uh Colf place? Like if this has been an issue, if there's been kind of the this rocky ground with the, the frost giants, what's caused her to just push through that to get what she needs to in this spot, knowing and it might have brought those frost giants down. That's what All I'll happens. say is that when Sophia wants mm. something, she wants to get it. Mm. Well, I mean, maybe she should have been paying closer attention to what her uh, her relations have been doing with that. Oh, well, she's young. I guess she's got a bit of a hot head to her, sounds like. If I can take your word for it, Raina. I mean, Mom, like, she's kind of been raised by her staff because her dad had died in the middle of the war when she was only like 10 or 12. I mean, true, but you know, when I think about rulers, wisdom, 
We can look to Wilhelm and see how he was raised. I mean, he grew up in our barn, you know that. Not grew up, but you were still a young man when you came, but still, I think inherently, how you're raised with wisdom can make or break you as a ruler, which is why I follow Wilhelm, which is why I put my respect in him because he's such a wise man in what he pursues as a ruler. Putting your own needs above the safety of your citizens, sounds like, for what? Some trinkets of your family? I think that she's done a pretty good job of keeping her people safe. It's more of the specifics of this that mm. made it touchy. Fifi seems like a good ruler, has an excellent military, has kept Helig in check this whole time. As a ruler as young as she is, it's incredible. But in our attempt to unite Westmar and stop civil war, or war with Illyria, we also don't want to start a war with the Frost Giants. Exactly. There may not, they might be a smaller community than the rest of Westmar, but they have their land and their traditions, and we have no business infringing on that. There are giants who left to join parts of Westmar in the north. There are many who left to join human communities in Netherwind, but a lot of them prefer to stay in stone rest with their own traditions and people, and we have an agreement that that is their territory, and we don't try to take it from them, and they don't try to take ours from us, but they can get quite cross when we start digging up in their mountains. Mm, which is what's happened. Now, the question is, this quarry, Fifi made it sound like it was their ancient tomb, which leads me to believe that Helig built that tomb on their land years ago, but I have no reason not to trust her at this moment, but I will question the this, truth. This tomb may have also existed before any lines were drawn. Mm. Yes. That's what I'm thinking. All right. I'm gonna go look up ahead and see how we're, how we're doing. We'll be back in a bit. Very well. With that, you continue traveling to the Northeast. I'm gonna have you all roll me a d6. Four. Five. One. Okay. I love it. The first day of travel passes uneventfully. You are able to make camp and the night passes. But it is, as you are packing up camp, in the next morning, you hear a howl and a scream as dawn breaks in the morning. And as the light comes up over the tundra, each of you can make me a perception check. 21. Ooh. 19. It's my wolf eyes. Uh, 26. I only have one eyes. So. <laughs> okay, don't, don't. Wrath, you are the first to see it, but uh, Rudy, you, you see it as well. Uh, Reyna has already gone out in the morning to scout the route for the, for the day. Um, but as you are packing up the camp, you see Coming over the hill is a wounded horse. It is laden with saddlebags and packs, and it is trying to run, but it is nursing a wound in its leg. And as it runs, you see chasing behind it with an ax is a crazed dwarven man. He is bundled up head to toe in cloths with, with a th thick pair of goggles on, and he ha has an action you can, and you realize that it's him that's screaming, chasing after the, this wounded horse with a bloodied axe as he comes over the hill and says, ah! and he's saying, screaming something in dwarfish. I speak dwarfish. Okay. The words that he's yelling 
are the dwarf dwarfish words for kill it, maim it, don't let it get away. He's chasing it, and you're a couple hundred feet away. So, you, but he's making a ton of noise, and the the horse is is grievously wounded. I lock in my crossbow. I take aim first at the dwarf, then I move it to the horse. Oh. I, he's yelling to stop the horse. Do I stop the horse or do I stop the man? I mean, how about we just separate them and see what's going on? The dwarf uh, in in the midst, he takes a hand axe out from his bandolier and he throws it at the horse, but misses. I, uh, I'm going to gain some elevation and I'm going to, I'm going to take a shot at uh, at the the crazed dwarf. At the crazed dwarf. Yeah, with my eldritch blast. Okay, make an attack roll, or well, roll for initiative. Three. Three. Yeah. Twenty six. Oh my gosh, Wilhelm. Sixteen. <laughs> I got a twenty six. <laughs> Wrath got a sixteen. I rolled a one. I have a soft spot for animals. Okay, Wilhelm, you'll be the first one to act. So. We don't have time to communicate. This is all happening very fast. I hear and understand the Dwarvish mm -hmm. and hear him yelling, stop. He's yelling to stop the horse. Yes. I'm. Can I try to, I'm going to try to shoot the wounded leg of the horse, oh. not to kill it. Because I don't quite know what's going on yet, but I want to stop the horse. Okay. You want to stop the horse. Yeah. All right. Um, the distance that you're at right now for your, what's the maximum range on your hand crossbow? 120. Okay. I'm going to say it's about 300 feet away currently. What do you want to do? I'm going to use my bonus action to dash. Mm -hmm. So I start running towards them, 60 feet. I take aim and I'm going to ready an action that as the horse gets closer, I'm going to shoot it. Okay. Wrath. Um, I'm going to uh, use my boots of flying and attempt to get closer as well, but I can only get 30 feet closer. Um, so I think I'm well, well out of range. Okay. I think. Do you I, want to I, ready as well? I think I, I have 120 feet on Eldritch Blast and I can't communicate yet. So yeah, as soon as as soon as I'm in range of the dwarf, if he enters my range, I want to uh, shoot Eldritch Blast at him. Okay. So you're going to shoot the dwarf, you're going to shoot the horse. <laughs> we what, have you, what are you going to do? Um, I want to get closer before I make any <laughs> assumptions about what's going on here. So I'm just going to dash. Keep dashing. Okay. Dash towards it. They continue to run as the dwarf hurls another hand axe at the horse. Um, hitting the horse, um, it is damaged again, but it still lives, and it limps forward, dashing again. The horse is now in range. I'm going to try to shoot at the leg of the horse. Okay. Make an attack roll. I got an 18. Okay. Oh, I guess I have to... It's a, my long range, right? Yeah. So uh, f that's going to be 15. Okay. You hear... Hit the horse, but not in the leg. Where do I damage? Mm. <laughs> no. uh oh. Uh, that's gonna be nine. The horse topples over into the snow. Wrath, what do you do? Does the does he continue to run? I guess it's gonna really He continues to run at it. If he enters my range, I will shoot him. Okay. But I actually, here's the question. Yeah, after the horse goes down, can I like change my ready to action if it, or is it all just sort of happening? Yeah, you could change your ready to action. So I, I, I want to see what happens after the horse okay. goes down. The dwarf rushes towards the horse and begins hacking at it with his ax. Yeah, I'm still gonna shoot that. Okay. Can I yell like, try not to kill him. <laughs> 
I mean, it's Eldritch Blast, so I don't know what you can do that isn't going right. to blow them up. Fire don't. your beams. Um, I'm going to shoot... Can I shoot three on a ready action? Yep. Still? Um, my lowest right now is a, a 16. They all hit. Um, oh, poor, poor guy. But he's attacking a horse. I know. A yeah, don't kill horse. Don't, 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 don't beat the like dead that. horse, <laughs> sir. <laughs> I think Roth and I are on I very to different dead, pages though. right now. I can speak to the dead. It's uh, uh, 20, uh, 24 damage. The Eldritch Blast blasts uh, blast at the dwarf, and he is flung back into the snow and lies still. Roth! <laughs> he was yelling to stop the horse. He did. I mean, you stopped it. You killed the horse, and he continued to attack it. He is mad. He's deranged. Or the horse was contaminated. Let's find out. Uh, we, I start running I'm through still, the snow. I'm still bolting. So, yeah, the three of us, you're flying. So, but yeah, we're we're approaching okay. the situation. Okay, you rush up to the corpse of the horse. The carcass is in the snow. The wounds in its leg were clearly caused by... Ooh. It's hard to say. Something savaged the leg of this horse. And the wound is almost a greenish yellow in the color of, in the coloration of the flesh. Um, is the horse dead? Give me a medicine check. Or investigation. Uh, that's going to be 23. The horse is gasping its last breaths. It is grievously wounded. Um, and um, your shot probably didn't kill it, but oh yeah, the, the... Sorry, the dwarf started to hack at it, so it's definitely dead. Yeah. <laughs> I, I check its pulse, even though it's bleeding, and it has like 100 yeah. wounds on it. It's dead, Raph. I'm already running past him to check the dwarf. Okay. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, I can... man. yeah, you guys, you guys just. Run. <laughs> I, I we're both attending the horse. This poor. Horse. <laughs> I check, just any signs, or if I don't see any signs, check a pulse. Okay. There, give me a medicine check. Fifteen. There's no pulse. Raph, this is twice. I can't believe this horse is dead. <laughs> I'm sorry. He was yelling to stop the horse. I I tried to stop it. And clearly, there's something going on with its leg. Maybe he got bit by something that has an infection. Maybe he's trying to stop the spread. Maybe he was doing right. That's my concern. I, the horse. Can we speak to this dwarf? <laughs> Can you speak to the horse? Not the horse. <laughs> the dwarf man. <laughs> That's actually a great question. Hmm. Can I use a combination of speak with animals and speak with dead to talk to a dead horse? <laughs> Do you have speak with animals? Yep. Or I just speak with Yeah, the I'll, I'll, I'll allow that. Yeah, that works. Sure. Do they? Uh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're both concentration. No, they're not. No, no. they're not. No, no they're not. No. Uh, it's going to take him a bit to get started, though, because this is yeah. too... So, so I... <laughs> Wait, <laughs> which... So you're speaking to the horse? I'm speaking to the dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> Rath has a very soft spot for animals. He loves animals. Animals are much easier than people uh, to understand and to communicate with. And this poor horse was just running for its life from this deranged lunatic dwarf. And you monster... <laughs> How could you kill it? I look at like the, I look at the dwarf who's like blown into pieces and has like these blast marks in him, and I look back at you. It's okay. You're at peace now. <laughs> and I'm gonna begin casting my. It's gonna take. I don't feel good about this. Uh, uh, I guess approximately, what like twenty minutes to cast two rituals. Um, yeah. So. Here's, here's, you know what, here's technically the problem. Yeah. Is that Speak With Animals has a duration of 10 minutes. 
and speak with dead has a duration of 10 minutes. <laughs> so if you want to stack them together, you're actually going to need to use a spell slot. You won't be able to cast them both as well. And actually, Speak With Dead isn't a ritual. Oh, sorry. Uh, speak With Dead is actually, I. Uh, that's my Eldritch Invocation, so I can okay. do that will. Okay. So I guess I could do my Speak With Animals, and as soon as it begin, and then I can yeah. start my Speak With Dead. Yeah. Because it'll okay. take an action. Okay, cool. Okay. Logistically, Solved. I begin talking sure. to the dead horse. Speak With Dead Animals. <laughs> New spell. <laughs> <laughs> it's the ultimate I know everything <laughs> I know it all okay so basically um, what I'm going to say with this the way the way I'm going to rule it is that it follows the rules of both spells okay, okay. so speak with animals is allowing you to verbally communicate with beasts for the duration right and so the knowledge and awareness of many beasts is limited by their intelligence, but many beasts can give you information about nearby locations and monsters, including whatever they can perceive and have perceived in the past day. Um, and the um, speak with dead means that you can only ask it five questions, basically. What attacked you? The, the horse. Woo! Winnie, <laughs> Winnie. Uh, but you understand what it, what it says. Nay, nay. So you see, uh, I'm drawing like all these yeah. circles around the horse, especially its head, and like putting down like bits. And Bruce is helping. Um, are you neighing as well? Like, are we watching? Nay! The the, the uh, um. The the horse replies. The dwarf. The dwarf. <laughs> <clears throat> Who is your where is your rider? Um the the horse re, re, replies um I'm a I'm a pack horse. I pull things. I pull wagons. Um my driver Something happened to him. Mm -hmm. um, uh, are there more of these creatures? Yeah, I, the, the, are, the horse doesn't understand that question. Uh, what? Uh, Ask him what attacked him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Um, what attacked your leg? The fur on the. The, 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 the face of the dwarf, something happened to it. It attacked me. Then they chased me. They chased me. And they kept chasing me. Um, what's your name? Um, my name is, um, Dirt. <laughs> Rest easy, Dirt. You are safe. You are safe now. And I'm just petting the okay. horse. Petting the dirt? <laughs> petting dirt. <clears throat> Spelled D-E-R-T. Yeah. Um, it's a dwarf, a if it's, it's a dwarfish word, yeah. Oh. Yeah. His name is Dirt. Yeah. And he was a corrupted monster, right? No, he was a simple uh, wagon horse. No, I shot him in the leg. Or the body. Dirt or... is actually the dwarven word for strong. You killed strong. No, I speak dwarvish. <laughs> you killed dirt. Strong. His name was strong. You're weak if you kill animals. He was, he's infected. Look at the wound on the leg. That was done by the dwarf. He told me. This is a complicated sin. You killed a dwarf. He dwarf... was a monster. How did the dwarf do that? And I point to like the weird colored leg um let's find out is he corrupted the dwarf yeah uh, well you shot him and so he his body is mangled <laughs> um it happens but you but uh and he was wearing he was wearing a bit of armor and furs and had thick like protective goggles on and 
um, and um, a scarf over over the door his face. So you need to actually like undress him. I take his scarf off. Wilhelm, undress the dwarf. Rudy, <laughs> can you remove his scarf? <laughs> I'm already removing the scarf. <laughs> What are his boots like? Are they better than mine? Uh, I no. don't think so. they don't fly. Leave them. I just say, be at the ready just in case. And I'll take the scarf off. Okay. Um, the you take the scarf off, um, and the dwarf's lips are blue, and its flesh is showing signs of frostbite. Um, but he was not undead. Um, just someone that was in the early stages probably of hypothermia mm. um, and possibly has been chasing this dwarf through this, the, the dwarf has been chasing the horse through the snow for some time uh, there's no mutation I want to look for the trail so they, they would have come this way if it's snowy I yeah, want to look there's still blood along the trail I'm going to begin to follow the trail to follow it back I'm, I mean, as you're wandering, I'm, 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 so we investigated the horse. There was no signs of mutations or anything out of the ordinary other than the discoloration of the wound. Mm -hmm. Is there anything on the dwarf that indicates delirium interference or anything of that sort? Give me an investigation check. I might even like cut the shirt open and like, mm -hmm. you know, give him once over. So that's going to be... Because of my cool ability, which I'm forgetting the name of, that doesn't let me roll lower than a 10 on things that I'm proficient in, that is going to be a 21. Investigating the dwarf's body, there's no signs of contamination in this dwarf. You may have killed an innocent dwarf and I an innocent horse. I can live with that. I can't. <laughs> you shouldn't. Hopefully we've learned to ask questions first <laughs> and shoot arrows and... Magic second? I thought we'd been over this lesson before! I feel shame as a bonus action. <laughs> or maybe it's a reaction. Yeah, it's a reaction. Now, I, I don't think this dwarf <clears throat> and even this horse were out here on their own. They must have come from somewhere. No, the horse said it was um, a wagon horse. It was a... a, a, a like now, a horse can't be a wagon. <laughs> It's a horse. <laughs> a horse is a horse. Of course. <sighs> a horse is dead, Wilhelm. This is no time to be joking. <laughs> I'm sorry. Shall we? <laughs> Look, they, I believe that there is maybe more. Um, Horses. Yes. And dwarves. How about this? Let me see if I can send Houdini up. See if we can get a bird's eye view of the situation. He said something of the fur. The horse said, dirt, said something of the fur attacked him. Hmm. Something from the dwarf's fur. Now, would a horse think of Beard? beards as dwarf fur? Or hair? I do not know. Hmm. He was cryptic. Um, as the dead are. I'm going to send Houdini <laughs> up what, 100, 100 feet in the air, see if we can get a, and then go through Houdini's eyes. Okay. Looking up in the air, you can see that there is a trail of blood going through the snow that the, that the horse left behind it. It was bleeding out for, for some time. But um, as, give me a perception check through Houdini's eyes. Is it my own perception or Houdini's perception? Houdini's. 15. There's snow falling now. And the trail might be starting to get buried. Hmm. Is I, it, I was just wanting to know if it's going in the same direction that we were headed in. Yes. I mean... I do have proficiency in survival, so I'm going to start following this trail. Mm -hmm. It's heading in the same direction we're going anyway, but I can help us follow this trail as, before it, we lose it completely. Mm. As you are all examining, you can all roll me a d6. Two. Two. Three. Okay. 
As you start assembling things together, Rena comes back and she says, it's only going to be a half, another half day. She She's surprised at the situation and asks, what happened? Wilhelm killed a horse. Well, Rath killed a dwarf. Uh, he was chasing him. He had a wound on him and we couldn't figure out. All we know is that the trail leads towards where we're going. The dwarf was yelling to stop the horse. I, I heard, as soon as I, I heard this, I, I, I came forward. I've been a far enough ahead. There's two things that you should know. We're only about half a day away from Kolf. It looks like there's still some of the dwarves that are there. Hmm. But there's a snowstorm coming in. We should make haste. I know we're only a few days out from healing, but it's going to be bad. And it might be very hard for us to make our way back to Helig once we get to Holf. Well, I think it's going to be easier to get to where we're going and bunker down. I agree. There's no time to waste. We, we must continue. We have we'll try supplies. to beat the storm. And we can at least see what uh, supplies are left at the dig site. We come with our own rations and we can make do. Your your friend can can that's back in healing. He can teleport. He had that power, right? Yes. Mm. It's okay. very painful and it almost killed us, but yes, he can. She pulls out a strange piece of metal. I took this from Hope. I could bring it back to them. So if we need to escape, mm -hmm. Sebastian will have a piece to get there and back again. That's probably a wise choice. So you would head back and we would continue, although you may not be able to join us again. Yeah. I mean, All right. I think that's the wisest course of action, just to make sure we have an escape plan. Rena, before we head forward, don't you? Is there anything else we need to know going into this situation? I'm going to loop back and see how far away, if there are any more giants coming. If you see a snow fox, it's a friend with a message for you. Don't blast the snow fox. I would never. You tried to early I on would... our way here. I was catching it. There's a difference. Um, I am a catch and release. Just like you caught that dwarf. And I, 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 off I, guard. I turn away. <laughs> I, um, I turned to Ray and I say, before you go, uh, take this just in case. And I give her the sending stone that connects to the other one with her. Okay. Dad. She takes say, it. Anything happens. You need to contact your father, all right? I'll be fine. I'll be fine. It's not about you, it's about me. If something happens to me, please let your father know. You'll be fine, Mom. I mean, I'll be fine, but just in case. All right. She heads out. We're going to have to try to beat this storm. We should go quickly. We must get to this quarry. Follow me. I'm gonna... <laughs> Follow the trail with yeah. my my survival Rina skills. Says it's, it's a clear shot from here. I will use my <laughs> incredible survival skills and uncanny eyesight to get us there. There? Yes. Yeah. Great. I'll walk ahead of you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have my bag of fibers. Looking for fibers. All right. You head through the snow, and as the snowstorm becomes thicker and thicker as you get closer to Holf, but eventually you see through the snow the light of several flickering fires. It's cold. It's freezing cold. I pressed the digit you. 
some warmth. I'm fine. What about you? I'm I'm fine. I'm literally, I don't know, a heater. <laughs> Rath, are you okay? Yes, but uh, you you look you look a little pale. <laughs> yes, my normal complexion. Oh, correct. Uh, we followed the trail here, correct? Mm -hmm. The same bloody trail from the horse. So the mad. I want to cast invisibility on all of us. Mm. I can cast it as a fifth level spell, which would give us all. Okay, you are all invisible. Does it get rid of footprints? No. no. Okay. It doesn't get rid of footprints. It's integral <laughs> that you mention that. It's very important. You come up to the site. <clears throat> it is a large rocky hill um, composed of granite and quartz rock that has been expo that is exposed over several cliffs that actually causes it to gleam in the distance. Um, even through the snowstorm, the few bits of light that strike it make it glint through almost like a, um, a searchlight through the snowstorm. But there is a great bonfire that is burning on top of it. As you approach through the thick snow, you can see that there are clear signs of ancient stones of a bluish gray quality that is certainly not native to the surrounding region uh, that have been placed as marker stones around the site. And as you see closer and approaching invisibly, you see that there is a large bonfire burning in the middle of a camp that is on top of the hill. For the hill rises up, and then the dwarves have excavated. So the, the hill kind of comes up, it's like a bowl, basically. They've made a quarry out of the top of the hill. There is a corner um, of this quarried site where the dwarves have lain a mine track and a cart where they have been dumping material down the side and dumping what, the, what they've carried out into several old broken wagons that are now stacked around here that are filled with a variety of this metal that Raina showed you before that is kind of this silvery gray color. Um, the metal does not see, remind you of the meteoric iron that is sometimes found in Dracula. It's something different. Hmm. Um, the dwarves have several tents, but also have constructed um, a log cabin, um, which is near the, the bonfire. So they have several things all built around. And you can see that they have quarried out several strange archways that are made of this purple, blue, green, gray stone. Um, these archways are immaculately detailed, but from this distance, you just see the general structure of it. You need to get closer to examine to, for, for more detail in general. The dwarves have erected all manner of uh, walkways uh, around the quarry site. Um, and there is there are wagons, tools, equipment, barrels of supplies and provisions. And as you approach closer to the quarry, you can see that the bonfire is a smell comes in the air as you get close. It is a smell of burning hair and something not far from pork. The bonfire is not a bonfire. It is a pyre. And the dwarves are burning bodies of other dwarves. There are only four dwarves that are here still burning bodies. Why wouldn't why would they be burning each other? Again, the heads that were collected from the giants showed signs of mutations, delirium infection. There is a chance. And 
I know that we don't want to take chances, so we, no matter what, we proceed with caution. But my intuition tells me that perhaps these four dwarves either have not succumbed to their infection yet, mm. or are trying to avoid becoming infected by burning the bodies of those that were. It's a speculation at this point. We're invisible. I'm looking back and forth and pretending that you're on either side of me, and that's just an assumption I'm also making. I imagine that for the purposes of invisibility, um, I'm going to use Bruce as sort of like a, a, a point of reference that you know, so you can look out into the world and you can see Bruce, and that sort of tells you that I'm you're close nearby. by. Um, and I just Bruce heard can be very, talk. very, uh, very stealthy. And I assume maybe the, the same can be said for Houdini, but... Perhaps we approach not with intent to kill, but with intent to observe, okay. listen, and learn. Mm. And then question. And then question. All right? Well, if we question, we reveal ourselves. I can but... question the dead. So you want them to be dead. No. We can There's... also question the alive. But they might lie to us. So might the dead. Yes, but they're just so much easier to question. Let's, Rath, we're, we're going... Start with layers, Rath. Listen and observe, then question, then question dead. All right? It's rule number 25. L-O-Q-Q-D. No, L-O-L. -L. <laughs> Listen, observe, <laughs> learn. That's what L-O-L -L means. Oh. L -O rule number 25. L-O-L. -L. <laughs> Is that your actual rule? <laughs> oh, my gosh. You wrote that down? I've literally had my rules written in this book. Lol, Rath, lol. Lol, then Q. Oh. The quarry. Q. Question. Fine. But we must... Well, maybe we can figure out if these... How quickly can we figure out if these are the corrupted? Do we capture one? Maybe we separate it from the others. For now, I'd say that we just hear them. Hear them talk amongst themselves. There's no doubt that if they're burning bodies, they're probably discussing matters at hand. They're aware of something, for sure. You, you know El no, Dwarvish. I know both, yes. Maybe you can listen in. go and listen in. I w will... Sounds like berries to me. Um... Will you two stay at range then? Wait for my signal. Right. I will wave. How about this? I'll send Houdini with you. We'll wait over here and you can just wave at Houdini. That work, I'll I'll have to nudge Houdini. Yes, that sounds can great. Can I stay invisible and go in Houdini or no? Uh, yes, you can because you're not concentrating on it, but Houdini will be visible. Okay. And I could do the same for Bruce. I believe so. Uh, Unless it's, it's an action to go, right? Uh, I mean, it, it depends on whether you think being your animals is more beneficial than being invisible. I guess we can all go up and you can just tell us what's going on. I mean, yeah, we'll just, <laughs> yeah, we'll just be there listening and be like, what did he say? Yeah. Hmm. Far enough away that you can whisper find a rock, to us. Find a rock. Yeah. The most notable thing as you get closer to the quarry that you see is the dwarves' machine. It is a mining grill tipped with delirium and connected to some sort of contraption that it appears to be several barrels and tubes and vials and vessels along with a large chain that ostensibly powers this delirium tipped mining. You want to get closer? I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get close enough that I can listen to the dwarves' conversation. Okay. I want to go like, is it in the quarry that they're doing the fire, or they, just outside? They, so there's the quarried out area, mm -hmm. and then on the two sides of the quarry, opposite sides of the quarry, they have their kind of one area that, as you get close, um, you can see that they've set it up as kind of like a forge and maintenance area where their workshops are, and then they have their campsite. So they are at their campsite burning their, their, their dead. And two of the dwarves already are arguing with, with one another. Um, and the, one of the, the dwarves says, 
We should have gone after Dumat. We don't know whether whether it was really him or not. Or the horse. Him or the horse. We couldn't have known. And then one of the other dwarves says, But Sodal bit the horse. Dumat was going after it. He couldn't have let it go. We would have known. It whatever got Sodal, it bit the horse, and it would have. It would have. Who knows what would have happened? I hope that they. And and one of the other dwarves says, I either hope they don't make it. Or that maybe. Then maybe Dumat gets it and makes it back. We need to burn. Either way, we won't know if they come back. We should have burned them. We should have burned the horse right away. Uh, we didn't burn it. No. Uh, I mean, me being close enough to hear this, probably I can't really communicate with. No. No. Um, I and look. One of, the, one of the one of the other dwarves says, "Should we let out Doctor Catton?" I don't even know if I can trust any of you anymore. You all stay away from me. You all stay back. Um, and so there's four dwarves. Um, there are two women and two men. Um, all of them are, um, s despite the cold, all of them are sweating profusely. Um, and several of them are still partially bundled up, several of them are not. Um, one of them has this big prominent brown beard and wears a headband around, ar around his head and has got this big puffy jacket um, with a big furry sort of uh, mane around it. And he's carrying a pick in, in, in one hand and a dwarven rifle in the other. He's speaking and arguing with uh, another one of the, the, the dwarves who does not have a beard. He's completely clean shaven, bald head, uh, big, big, thick, thick nose and fur furrowed eyebrows. And the two of the, of the dwarves are arguing with, with, with each other. And then there's the, the two other dwarven women um, are, uh, al are also arguing o over, uh, are joining in the, the, the argument. Um, it's clear none of them trust each other. I, I like reach over to where Bruce is and and I, I I'm going I'm going to try to do this non-verbally but I'm <laughs> what you're you're invisible so he can't even see you we can't see each other stop it stop, stop it one of the other doors says we need to come up with some sort of test <laughs> Some way that we can trust each other. Otherwise, we're just gonna kill each other anyways. I guess, are me and Wrath not with you right now? I mean, I assumed Wrath was near me, but because <laughs> I was just poking him, but <clears throat> in the head to try to signify maybe using his mind to talk to us, but no, never well, mind. Well, I can only do it when I can see a creature. Well, we probably should have thought of this <laughs> before. And I, you get you can end the uh, the the the, t the invisibility only ends if you attack um, a creature. You know, if you uh, sorry, if you attack something or cast a spell, but it, other actions don't. Um, because we can't communicate right now, uh, y'all. Are... I. How bad is the wind blowing? How bad is the wind? How blowing? how how it's howling howling? Yeah, the fl fire is flickering and and the light of the, the day is starting to dim. I'm... We're behind a rock? You can be, be you're invisible behind any of the quarry, the, the quarry features. There's lots of places that you, you could hide here. You look, um, there's simply the illumination of the great bonfire the dwarves have lit. I'm going to wander away from these two. Okay. Back out further from the quarry. Okay. Can I choose to not be invisible anymore, or do I have to take an action? I guess you could you could attack the ground. Yeah, to uh, be not invisible anymore. Um, and I'm going to light a torch, <laughs> and I'm going to pull my cloak up, and I'm going to start walking towards the campfire from outside the quarry. You guys might not even notice that I left, okay. but 
Yeah, I so we to... just see you. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the dwarves, as the, as the torch lights up, the dwarves say, Look! Oh, you hear them call out. And, and they're, they're speaking to, to one another. Someone's approaching! Uh, in, in Dwarvish, I yell, Do you have warmth and safety? Neither! I see a fire. It's very cold out here. I just need, I need, I need a place to get warm. One of the, one of the others says, If you value your life, you'll get away from here now. I, and then another says, No, he's lost in the wilderness. We have to help him. It's, I will not make it anywhere else tonight. I will perish if I stay out here. And, and, and one of, and the, 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 the woman says, We need to help him. And the other says, He can't, we, you'll be doomed if you come with us. I mean you no harm. I just need a... I will be doomed out here. I'll take my chances with the comfort of the fire if you... if you'll have me. They... they hold down their weapons. Make a persuasion check. Uh... That's gonna be an 18. If he's an outsider and not one of us, he might be clean. What if he ran into... What if he ran into Dumat? What if he ran into dirt? He could be infected too. We'll just have to take that chance. Come, stranger. I I approach the fire uh, and walk into the light of it. And I kind of look back to like where we were hiding and kind of like nod lightly. Uh, I'm going to say in your mind, because I can see you now, um... Uh, your, we will spring into action when you, uh, say the words, uh, help from my friends. I, 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 I kind of like, I start nodding and I, and I look to the dwarves and I say, a quarry all the way out here. I... I thank you. I'm, I'm so thankful that you were here to, to help. I, I saw the lights from a distance and thought it was my only chance. One of the, the, the dwarf with the, the, the big puffy jacket and the goggles and the, the pick and the, and the gun comes up to you and says, I don't know what you're doing out here, but if you thought you were going to find safety here, I'm sorry to say, but you're just as doomed as the rest of us. What's happening here? It's, surely this can't be as bad as out there. There's giants and, and animals. And giant animals. And giant animals. <laughs> I passed by... I passed by a horse and a dwarf dead in the snow on my way here. Shall we tell them you're alone? I'm alone. Or, I'm not very good at lying, so let me rephrase that. Do you see anybody else with me? <laughs> not so long ago, we were digging through here. We've been looking for a way. This is all the top level of something else. We've been looking for a way in. He points to the quarry. You can see the elegant archways that they've carefully dug out. And in the midst of them, there is a large circular fountain decorated with statues of winged cats. And the, the, the dwarf points to a mound of muddy earth not far from the fountain. That was where we dug it up. Frozen remains of an unspeakable creature. We thought it was dead. It wasn't. What type of creature? Some kind of... We thought nothing of it. We thought it was some sort of mutated beast from a bygone age. But there was something in its blood. 
something. The first one that changed was Urist. Then Cogsack. Then Thrum. They changed. Sprouting all kinds of limbs and things, and the only way we could kill them was with fire. They weren't them anymore. They were like that. Whatever that thing was that we dug up. And now with the storm coming in, we don't know who we can trust anymore. Unfortunately, it seems that with this storm, we're all stuck here for a time, including myself. The four of you seem okay, but I take it the bodies, and I, I gesture to the pyre, they were infected. Infected or killed by it. Doesn't even give the dead peace. The horse and the dwarf, they were not burned. What will be, what will happen? You mean dirt, a horse. I passed by a horse and a dwarf on my way here. One of the other, the, the, the other bald dwarf, he speaks up. I told you, he's probably infected by them. We should kill him now. They were already dead when I got there. The horse had a wound on its leg, unlike anything I've seen before. I'm not sure what killed the dwarf. I... <laughs> the, sure wasn't a wizard. <laughs> Some kind of eldritch blast. That's Make a sure. deception check. Uh-oh. <laughs> What'd you get? Five. <laughs> you know something. <laughs> more than what you're letting on. Well, there's a way to figure figure out. We know it responds to pain and fire. So come close to the fire and we'll figure out what the truth is. And that's where we're gonna end for the night. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Cool, 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 cool. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. And all we hear is gibberish, right? All we're hearing is like these people bicker. We're like, we're like, uh huh, uh huh. It seems like he's making in ways. Oh, they're inviting him closer to the fire. Oh, they That's mentioned nice. dirt. <laughs> oh, I heard dirt. Yeah, it's all in Dorvish, so Did yeah. Did we agree yeah. that he was going to say what he was going to say in common or dirt? <laughs> yeah, he's got to, I hope he holds it in common. <laughs> well, a big thank you, as always, to our amazing cast, Jill, Kelly, and Joe, for playing tonight. And a huge thank you to Kyle for all of his work behind the scenes. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah, Kyle. And a huge thank you to our Dungeon Master, Monty <laughs> yeah. Martin, for laying out this uh, incredible chapter that I'm very excited to play in. Mysteries. Oh, Sorry. we're so trapped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this. Um, in our game tonight, we uh, had the opportunity to use some incredible assets produced by some talented artists. They have graciously given us permission to use them in our tabletop games, and you can use them in your games too. And we encourage you to check out and support some of these amazing creators, uh, including uh, normally our games uh, have uh, miniatures by WizKids uh, and Hero Forge, uh, terrain by Dwarven Forge, and some uh, terrain 3D printed by Monty himself. And uh, as always, player character artwork by Elizabeth Perot and music by Tabletop Audio. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes shirts, uh, including Shadows of Drakenheim featuring the Dusk Wardens. Yes, yes, yes. All your faves. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Our videos and live streams are made possible thanks to the incredible generosity of our Patreon community. If you enjoy our work, please consider becoming a patron of our show. You can find out how by following the links in the description below or at patreon.com slash dungeon dudes. We also have a phenomenal Discord community exclusive for our patrons. So if you're joining us on Patreon, make sure to hop onto our Discord where you can chat with us about all things D&D, TTRPG, or anything else you want. You can also join in on our writer's rooms and Q&As. So that's all happening on our Discord.
And as well, we got regular videos coming out on our YouTube channel every Tuesday, every other Tuesday and every Thursday. So check that out on YouTube. Be sure to join us next Tuesday when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also catch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time in Drakenheim.